We are standing on the Michael Bushman Farm at the Gettysburg National Military Park. At the time of the Civil War, Michael Bushman was the owner of this farm behind me. But he actually lived in the town of Gettysburg on High Street. Uh, Bushman had a tenant farmer living here at the time of the battle named Essek. Uh, and there was some pretty heavy fighting on his farm during the battle and the farm was damaged considerably according to the claims file. Now, Michael Bushman had a brother named Emanuel Bushman, who actually lived in the town of Gettysburg also on Breckenridge Street at the time of the battle. Emanuel Bushman in the 1880s wrote a lot of local history, myth, lore, and legend. The brothers had actually grown up in this house, and of course, um, Bushman is the origin of the story of the giant snake at Devil's Den, which supposedly inhabited the area in the 1830s. But also, he's the um, a person who initiated the story about Indian Field, a field where supposedly there were so many artifacts, spear points and arrowheads, and uh, according to Bushman, uh, burials, that he deemed it the site of an ancient Indian battle between two different tribes, and so it became known as Indian Field. And he's very specific about his location of this field, and although many people have suggested it's somewhere behind me, clearly uh, Bushman gives a location of Indian Field as on the other side of the Emmitsburg Road, just south of the Eisenhower Farm. Now, during the Battle of Gettysburg, this area directly behind me was a scene of heavy fighting. And one of the incidents of the battle that's best known uh, for this location is uh, John Bell Hood and his protest to General Longstreet. And you might know if you've watched the movie Gettysburg or if you read a book about the battle that highlights General Hood's uh, biography that was published in 1870. It's sort of an autobiography that was published after his death. Um, there's a story that Hood relates that on July 2nd, as they were lining up for the attack, General Hood decided that he did not want to attack that position, and it was much too strong to attack. As a matter of fact, he's quoted as saying something like, they're gonna roll rocks down on my men. Um, and he protests to Longstreet that he do something else and not make a frontal assault on that position. Exactly what else he wanted to do is kind of open to speculation. But basically, he would like to halt the attack, to take some of his troops and move them around the Union line and attack the rear of Big and Little Round Top on the second day of the battle. Now, this has been presented over the years as if this idea to move around the flank of the Union Army is a much better idea. And I think the reason that people uh, subscribe to that point of view is the fact that what happened on July 2nd didn't work. So anything seems like a better idea. But let me just suggest something. Hood's idea to halt the attack and move around to the right and hit the rear of the round tops is the stupidest idea I have ever heard. And I get tired of people constantly bringing it up. Let's analyze it for just a second. Okay. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna halt the attack. We're gonna let Hood move around, big and little round town. How many men are we gonna give him? Are we gonna give him his whole division? Let's give him his whole division. So let's say he takes like 6,000 men. How long is it gonna take him to get around behind big round town? We know, because we live here, that he's gonna have to march down the Emmitsburg Road, He's gonna to have to march across Ridge Road. He's gonna to have to march across Knight Road to get to the Tawny Town Road on the other side of those hills. How long would that take? Let's say they're moving really quickly and let's say it takes an hour. What are the rest of the Southern forces supposed to do for an hour? Just sit there and look across the field and stare at the Union troops while Hood's making this magical march? What's like, General McCall is gonna be like, Sickles, how you doing over there? And what happens if Hood marches away and General Sickles, who you might know is a little bit unstable, launches an attack 
against the Confederate Army and McClaws over here. Are the, is the Union Army just going to sit still and do nothing while Hood makes this march? And let's also point out that if we put another hour on the clock, by the time Hood gets to the rear of Big and Little Round Top, the 6th Army Corps is over there. Hood's plan is not a good plan. And it makes sense that Longstreet instantly would know it's not a good plan and just tell him to get in line. And again, I think we just have the idea that it's a better plan than what happened because we know what happened didn't work. And of course, on the second day, from four o'clock in the afternoon until dark, we had some of the bloodiest fighting in all of American history.